The success of your MALDI-TOF mass spectrometry analysis depends largely on how the sample is prepared. There are a number of choices to be made when preparing a MALDI-TOF sample, each of which has its own advantages and disadvantages. Start by perusing the scientific literature or discussing your analysis with an expert with knowledge of the instrument or the class of compound you're planning to analyze. But even with an established method, some experimentation will be required to optimize your result. Preventing contamination is critical. Even if your technique and method are perfect, if your sample is contaminated, your results will be compromised. Although MALDI-TOF is more tolerant to contamination than some other forms of mass spectrometry, contaminants in your sample may interfere with crystallization, interfere with ionization, and complicate the resultant mass spectrum. It's for these reasons that extreme caution must be taken to avoid contamination of your sample at all times. If you don't take a high-quality sample to MALDI, then you won't get high-quality data out of it. And that's the one word of warning and why we spend so much time showing people um, how to use the tools, how to use the sample preparation tools, how to be careful to keep materials um, clean and free of dust and salts. Because MALDI relies on ionization of analyte molecules by proton transfer, any ionic compounds already in your sample may be preferentially detected instead of your analyte. Therefore, it's important to make sure any water used in the preparation of your analyte or sample must be of maximum purity. A separate desalting purification step may be necessary if salts, buffers, or detergents were used in the synthesis of your analyte. The MALDI target plate must be cleaned scrupulously before beginning. Wipe the plate with a tissue wetted with an alcohol such as 2-propanol, ethanol, or methanol. Perform alternating rinses with ultra-purified water and solvent. Optionally, use an ultrasonic bath for more thorough cleaning. Let the plate dry completely, either in a dry, dust-free environment or under a stream of purified inert gas. From this point forward, only handle the target plate on its edges with your gloved fingers. To avoid contamination by dust, keep the plate sealed in its storage container until it's ready for use. Lab coats are a consistent source of dust and other microscopic debris. Your street clothes are often more clean than a lab coat. One defining characteristic of MALDI-TOF mass spectrometry is the use of a UV-absorbing matrix which co-crystallizes with the analyte on the target plate and facilitates ionization of large, non-volatile organic molecules. There are many substances that are commonly used as a matrix, but they tend to be moderately small organic molecules with a conjugated pi system that absorbs UV light. This allows the energetically excited matrix molecules to physically ablate from the surface of the target, carrying the analyte molecules into the gas phase along with them. Matrix molecules also tend to be acidic. This allows the analyte molecules to become ionized by a proton transfer from the excited matrix molecule. The matrix you use is mostly determined by the class of compound you are analyzing. DHB is very widely used, but CHCA, SA, and others can be used depending on your substance. A search of the literature or some widely available MALDI-TOF references, along with a discussion with your instrumentation staff, will be helpful in making this determination. Each matrix has its own advantages and disadvantages, including ease of crystallization and ionization, tolerance to impurities, and sensitivity. Often one of these advantages will come at the expense of others, and the behavior will differ for various analytes. Choose an appropriate solvent based on your matrix, analyte, and loading technique. Your matrix and analyte both need to be fully soluble in your matrix solvent. Some sample types have popular choices, for instance protein samples often make use of water acetonitrile with 0.1% TFA. Prepare a saturated solution of the matrix in an Eppendorf tube and vortex it to ensure it is fully mixed. Use a centrifuge to compact the undissolved solid and draw off the saturated supernatant into a new Eppendorf tube. Label this your matrix solution. To prepare your analyte, it must be significantly diluted. Concentrations of 0.1 to 10 micromolar are commonly listed, but the exact optimal dilution depends on the analyte, and in fact several dilutions should be attempted to see which gives the best results. If your sample is too dilute, it may be below the detection limits of the instrument. 
If it's too concentrated, it may have difficulty ionizing. Use Eppendorf micropipettes and tubes that are clearly labeled. Choose a solvent which has an appropriate volatility and in which your analyte is fully soluble. When your matrix and analyte solutions are prepared, the sample can be loaded onto the MALDI target plate using a number of different methods. The method you choose will depend again on the class of compound, but also different methods can be tried to empirically determine the best method. The original technique for loading a MALDI target plate is known as the dried droplet method. In this technique, the analyte and matrix solutions are first mixed in a ratio of your choice, and then a single 1 to 2 microliter droplet is applied to the target with an Eppendorf pipette. The solvent is allowed to evaporate while the matrix and analyte co-crystallize. A faster variant of the dried droplet method is on-plate mixing. In one microliter droplet of the matrix solution is applied to the target, and before it dries, one microliter of the analyte solution is added into the matrix droplet. The solutions are mixed by repeatedly withdrawing and expelling with the pipette tip. The sample spot is then allowed to dry. This allows the stock analyte and matrix solutions to remain in separate tubes, as they are only combined on the plate. While it's always important to prevent cross-contamination with pipette tips, it is especially critical to use a new pipette tip with each step in this method to ensure that the stock matrix and analyte solutions remain pure. In samples where the resolution and mass accuracy are critical, sometimes improvements can be found by making a more homogeneous solid sample. In the thin layer, or fast evaporation method, the matrix and analyte are mixed into very volatile solvents such as methanol or acetone. The matrix is first applied and allowed to dry into a very thin uniform layer. The analyte solution is then applied on top of the dried matrix. While the sample is very consistent, this technique may reduce sensitivity as some compounds may be difficult to crystallize like this. There are numerous other methods, such as a sandwich or dual layer method, that is popular with the SA matrix, and the crushed crystal method for inducing crystallization in particularly non-volatile solvents. Many Malditoff samples are stable for a number of weeks or even months, especially if they're stored in a sealed container in an inert atmosphere. As the laser only strikes small portions of the sample's surface area, one spot will be good for many analyses. As you've seen, there are several choices to make when preparing a sample for Malditoff mass spectrometry. Remember to use literature and references to narrow the parameters for the type of substance you're analyzing, and solicit advice from knowledgeable colleagues or facility staff. As Malditoff becomes an increasingly widespread method, the collective knowledge for best results will grow. Some helpful documents are linked in the video description below. Ultimately, though, every sample will require experimentation to find the optimal conditions. Fortunately, Malditoff is perfect for this, and especially as you're developing your technique, don't be afraid to use as many sample spots as you need to get the best results. Music